Alright team, welcome to the video. In today's video, this is going to be a good one. We're talking about how to get bigger and stronger for guys and girls. Don't go away. <laughs> Before we start though, if you haven't checked out the previous video, make sure you hit the YouTube card at the top right hand of the screen. Make sure you hit the like button so you like this video and let me know that you're enjoying the content and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already so you can join the AA gang. If you join the AA gang, you will get a virtual pat on the back right now. Right, that's a winner. I'm definitely joining that game. Boot. It insane. I've got a few research articles I'm going to be discussing and then I'm going to go over the best exercises for each muscle group. Then I'm going to talk about how you can build up certain muscle groups if you're wanting to build up certain areas. Then finally I'm going to talk about nutrition if you want to get bigger and stronger. But first of all what I'm going to start with is you need to look at muscular hypertrophy so getting bigger, bigger muscles and getting stronger so more training the central nervous system like a continuum in regards to repetitions. So in my opinion if we look at repetitions from one repetition to 15 repetitions then at one end of the continuum a one repetition max somebody who's trying to lift as much weight as possible for one rep they're more training their central nervous system they are going to be still training the muscle groups targeted for that movement so if it's a one rep max back squat they're still going to be training their glutes quads and hamstrings but it's more going to be training the central nervous system to move a heavier load but then if we go towards the upper end so the 15 repetition so somebody's lifting a weight for a 15 repetition max so again if we're talking about about a back squat then somebody is trying to perform 15 repetitions with a certain weight to reach muscular failure that's more hitting muscular hypertrophy that's more targeting muscular hypertrophy because it's more focused on muscular endurance in the quads glutes and hamstrings anything up towards the 15 repetition max is more about building up muscle fiber size and then towards the one repetition max is more about training central nervous system so anything in between like between 8 and 12 which you typically see within a weight training program is try to target the best of both so increasing strength and increasing muscular size in my opinion though it's great to train the body in different repetition ranges so you're training the body's central nervous system then you're doing a little bit of muscular hypertrophy that's how different programs are developed some are focused more towards powerlifting some towards more bodybuilding some of the mixture of the two and you usually hear the expression power building for that really in my opinion anything above 15 repetitions is more becoming a cardiovascular exercise that's training more of the heart but it's good once in a while, say every couple of months, to do a workout where you're doing a weight for 20 repetitions just because your body's going to be not used to that and it's going to still have to adapt to it. But if you're doing it very frequently, it's becoming more of a cardiovascular exercise. If we take these first two scientific articles, they were more looking into the weights that trained and untrained individuals were using in sets to see if one was more beneficial to muscular hypertrophy and one was more beneficial to um, building strength. And what they found is that muscular hypertrophy was quite similar between groups that were doing higher, heavier loads for less repetitions and individuals that are doing lighter loads for slightly higher repetitions. But they always found with these articles that the subjects using the heavier resistance and slightly lower repetitions were also able to increase their one repetition max and their overall strength. So it's very key to still be including heavier loads within your training if you want to build up strength. As you build up strength, you'll be able to use heavier weights for your bodybuilding sets and then for your high repetition bodybuilding sets if you're doing that as well within your training you're going to increase muscle size which is eventually going to tie over into an, in an increase in strength so it's good to have a bit of both in your training there was this article that compared traditional weight training and a rest pause approach to weight training so rest pause um, in a nutshell is when you do a certain amount of repetitions for the set you reach the end of a set you you're pretty much at failure then you rest for about 10 to 20 seconds then you go back and do a few more repetitions they found benefits between the two a muscular um, hypertrophy occurred in both groups but they found the group doing the rest pause set they developed their muscular endurance a little bit more than the traditional set then finally these last two articles the first one was looking at longer interset rest periods so one group had normal rest periods of about between 60 and 90 seconds then the other subject group had a longer rest period and they found actually a little bit more benefit to the longer rest periods just because the subjects were able to use a little bit more weight and then the final one was about doing intercept stretching or just traditional strength training so traditional strength training um, doesn't include doing stretching between sets but the other subject group in that study did perform stretching between sets and they concluded that there could be some benefits in set stretching but nothing that was too statistically significant but what you can take from all these articles is that it's really good to incorporate different styles of training 
to be able to see muscular adaptation over time. To start with, just picking a few exercises and focusing on progressive overload is great, but as you're becoming more trained and your body becomes used to the stimulus, it's good to include things like drop sets, rest pause sets, supersets, all that kind of stuff. It's like a toolbox and you just take things out and use them, but not too many at once. Now I'm going to go over my top exercises for each muscle group. I'm not going to go into too much detail with all of them. I'm just going to list them off for you and then I might do another video in future if you'd like to see that about how to perform these um, certain exercises and how you can program them in. But for glutes, quads and hamstrings, I would say the barbell back squat. But if I'm sticking to glutes, barbell back squat, then a barbell glute bridge is really good also for um, building up your glutes. And then doing a weighted donkey kickback. I would definitely recommend including that in training, but usually you have to have um, a cable to be able to perform that so my top two would be barbell back squat and then the glute bridge weighted for hamstrings my top exercise would be a stiff legged deadlift and a lying hamstring curl for quads my top exercise would be a walking lunge weighted and then a seated quad extension if you really want to build up just your quadriceps chest would be an incline bench press and then an either an incline or flat dumbbell fly for the back it'll be a weighted pull up or body weight pull ups if you're still trying to build up to that, or a lap pull down if you can't do body weight pull ups. And then a seated row or a barbell row, preferably the free weight stuff, so a barbell row. Then for biceps, a standard bicep curl, although weighted pull ups do build up your biceps anyway. And then for triceps, a lying skull crusher with the bars really good, and the tricep push downs a nice accessory movement. And finally, for abdominals as well, a weighted toes to bar is really good, or just toes to bar, or a lying leg raise if you can't do toes to bar yet. And then either using the ab roller or just doing a seated straight legged toe lift. That's really good for helping develop your lower ab strength. And calves, well, I don't want to talk about calves because my calves are rubbish. Donkey calf raises are pretty good though for calves. I wish I had bigger calves. Now, if you want to get bigger and stronger, you need to pick a compound movement. So a compound movement requires multiple muscle groups to perform the movement. So for uh, quads, hamstrings and glutes, that would be a barbell back squat. And then you need to include a few accessory movements. So if you're doing legs and hamstrings and quads and glutes, you'll include a weighted walking lunge, then some light hamstring curls, and then some seated quad extensions. That would be a perfect leg day. And focus on progressive overload. And you also need to be in a slight calorie surplus. You don't need to be in a crazy calorie surplus, just a slight calorie surplus. So you need to work out your maintenance calories with your current activity level and your height weight. Then you need to try and find that maintenance level, stick to it for a week so you know it's your maintenance because sometimes you may find you need to slightly adjust calories. Then add a couple of hundred calories on top of your maintenance, stay there for a while and you ideally want to be gaining a couple of pounds a month. One or two pounds a month is ideal. If you are interested in online coaching, I do this for people and help program people's workout plans and do customised nutrition plans based on where people shop. Then my email is in the YouTube description. I am going to come out with a new website soon. I'm still working on that. Or feel free to send me a message on Instagram. My Instagram link is in the YouTube description. Thanks again for watching. If you have any questions about this topic or you'd like to discuss anything, leave it in the YouTube comment section below. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Bye.